Welcome everyone to this Blender tutorial series where I'm going to show you how to create this birdhouse animation in Blender. So I was inspired to create this scene because we actually have a birdhouse very similar to this in our backyard and there's a family of birds living in it. So I decided to throw together this little scene and it turned out really great and so I thought I would create a tutorial series on how to make it. So in part one we're going to be modeling the birdhouse and we're also going to be modeling the hooks and the rope which are holding up the birdhouse. Then in part two we're going to be adding all the wood materials to the birdhouse and we're also going to do the lighting for the scene and we're going to create the tree branch and the tree trunks in the background. Then in part three we're going to be making the smaller branches with the little leaves and we're going to place those around the scene and we're also going to add a cool shadow effect to make it look like the scene is in a forest and there's larger trees and there's sunlight coming through the leaves. And then in part four we're going to render the scene and do some compositing and then we'll do a very simple animation so we'll have the birdhouse kind of rocking around in the wind and we'll also move the camera and animate the leaves a little bit. Now this is going to be more of an intermediate level tutorial, so I'm not going to be going over every single shortcut key or every single button that's pressed, so if you're a complete beginner or very new to Blender, then you might have a hard time following this tutorial, but I still will all be doing it in real time, so as long as you know the basic shortcut keys and basic navigation, then you can totally follow along with this tutorial. And if you enjoy my tutorials and you'd like to help support me and my channel, then some great ways to do that are on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And on my Gumroad and Patreon, you can get access to 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials, and other Blender content on my Gumroad and Patreon. And if you'd like to purchase the project files for this tutorial, then you can do that as well on my Gumroad and my Patreon. Links will be in the description. And all of your support really does help me to keep on creating these free Blender tutorials. So let's go over the resources that you'll need to download for this tutorial. So I'm going to be downloading this Wood 049. This is a free texture from Ambient CG. All the links to these textures will be in the description. And I'll be downloading the 4K JPEG, and we'll be using this on the birdhouse. And then for the leaf texture, I'm going to be downloading this Leaf Set 024. Again, this is from Ambient CG, and I downloaded the 2K JPEG version. And then to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections to light the scene, I'm going to be downloading this Whipple Creek Gazebo. This is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com and I just downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. And then when we video edit the frames together, if you want to add some nice sound effects of some birds chirping and some forest, then I'm going to be downloading this free sound here from freesound.org of these birds chirping and these forest sounds. And then for the tree trunk and the larger tree branch, I'm going to be using my procedural white birk tree bark material. And I actually have a tutorial on how to create this material, so if you'd like to watch the tutorial, then you can find the link in the description. So you can pause this video and watch that tutorial and learn how to create the procedural tree bark, and then we'll be using it in the video. And you can also purchase this procedural tree bark on my Gumroad store, link will be in the description. And also if you're on my Patreon page, you have access to this tree bark material. And if you've purchased my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack. This also comes in my Ultimate Procedural Material Pack. So if you'd like to help support the channel as well as get all of my procedural materials, then definitely check out my Ultimate Material Pack. So to start, I'm just going to select everything, and then I will just delete everything. So I'm now going to press Shift A, and let's go to Mesh, and I'm just going to add a cube. Because, you know, you always have to delete the default cube and add a new one. So when modeling to the real-life scale in Blender, the default primitive objects are a little bit larger than an average human. So this cube is quite large, so I'm going to scale this cube down by 0.1, and then hit Enter, and I will then apply the scale with Control A. So we're going to start by modeling the top of the birdhouse. So I'm going to go into Edit Mode and I'm going to scale this object down on the z-axis and I'll just scale it by 0.1. Then I will duplicate this object and I'm going to bring it over on the x-axis and I'm just going to have two cubes next to each other. And these are going to be the planks of wood on the top of the birdhouse. Then I'm going to select everything and I'll rotate everything. Let's rotate it on the y-axis by 45 degrees. And then I want to click right over here on the modifier properties. Let's click on add modifier and we can add the mirror modifier. And I can just move this back and that's going to be the top of the birdhouse. I'm also going to bring it up on the z-axis so that it is on the top of that grid, just resting on the grid there. So I'm now going to go back to object mode, and I will add another object. Let's add another cube, and I'm also going to scale this cube down by 0.1. And I will rotate this cube. Let's rotate it on the y-axis by 45 degrees as well. And I can go to front view, and I just want to select the top here, and I'm going to scale this down, and I'm going to scale it down so that it fits 
the birdhouse. And I can also bring it down on the Z axis and just scale it down like that. I can also go into edit mode and I can bring these a bit closer. So something like that. I also want to turn off this merge here because if the merge is turned on, then it's going to connect if it gets really close, but I want to turn off the merge and then I can bring it a bit closer and I'll bring it down there. So just bring it down like that. So I now want to navigate over here to the side and I'm going to scale this on the Y axis and just make it a bit longer so it's covering the entire house. And I could also bring this over a little bit, bring it forward on the Z axis so that that roof is kind of overhanging a little bit on the top. So I now want to go back to object mode and I want to apply the mirror modifier. So let's apply that mirror and now it's been applied so I can go back into edit mode and I'm going to go to the face select. I just want to select this face and then I'll go to front view and I will extrude this out. And because I hit extrude on this face, it's extruding it along the normals of that face. And so I'm just going to bring it there and place it there just to fill that top. So now these two faces are actually overlapping. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just select these faces and I'm gonna bring them forward on the Y axis. And then also we should probably save our Blender file just in case it crashes. So click up here on file and you can click on save as and save your project. So let's now select the house object and I will go into edit mode and make sure you're in face select, just select the front face and I'm gonna bring it back on the Y axis and I wanna make it about the same thickness and this is gonna be the back wall of the birdhouse. So I'm now gonna go back to object mode and I will duplicate this and I'm gonna bring it over on the Y axis and we're gonna put this here for the front wall. I'm now gonna go into edit mode and I will select this face and this face and I will duplicate these faces and just bring them over here and then I will press P and I will separate by selection so that their own object and then just select this object. We're gonna go into edit mode and I can select everything and I will scale everything on the Y axis to make it longer, just to fill the birdhouse. I'll also go to front view and then I'm also gonna go into wireframe and I'm gonna bring these faces up on the Z axis just so that they're a little bit higher. And if I go back to solid view, now you can see it is kind of a little bit higher. So I'm now gonna go back to object mode and I just wanna select the front of the birdhouse. Then I can press shift H to hide everything else. And then I'm going to create a hole in the front face here for the birds to go in and out of. So what I first want to do is add a mirror modifier to this object. So I'm going to click here on object. I'll go to set origin and I'm going to set the origin to geometry. So now the origin is in the center there. Then I'm going to go into edit mode and I will add a loop cut. Just left click and right click and leave it there in the center. And then I can go to the face select and I'm just going to select this loop of faces there and also this face there. And then I can delete. I'm just going to delete the faces. So now that we've deleted half of it, we can add a modifier. Let's add the mirror modifier and I want to mirror it over on the Y axis. And then I also want to make sure the clipping is turned on. So the center is merged. And if I select everything, I can bring it back a little bit just so it's a little bit thicker. So I now want to select this face right here on the front. I will inset that face, just inset it down and make it about that big. And then I want to make this a circle. So I'll press control R for the loop cuts and I want to scroll my mouse wheel until there are five cuts and then just left click and right click. So it stays there in the center and I'll do the same thing here. So add loop cuts and leave it there in the center and I'm going to have five of them. So now that we have more geometry, we can make this a nice circle. Now to make this a circle, I'm going to be using the loop tools add on. So if you don't have the loop tools add on enabled, you can just click here on edit and go to the preferences and then just go to the add ons and you can search for a loop and then you just want to check mark the loop tools add on. So if you press the N key to open up the side panel, you can go here to edit and make sure you're in edit mode when you do this and we have the loop tools add-on. So what I'm going to do now is go to the face select and then I'm going to use the circle select with the C key and I'm just going to select all of these faces right here and then just hit the escape key. So now that we have that selected right here on the loop tools we can click on circle and now that's a nice little circle. I can also scale the circle down and maybe bring it up a little bit so something like that. Then I can extrude the circle back and I'm going to extrude it into the mirror and then I can just delete the faces. So now we have that little hole there for the birds to go in and out. So I will now unhide all of the objects with Alt-H. And then I want to select this object and I want to apply the mirror modifier. And then I want to select all the objects and I want to add a bevel modifier to all the objects. So I'm first just going to apply the scale by pressing Control a And then with all of these objects selected at once, I'm going to click on Add Modifier and we're going to add the bevel modifier. I'm going to turn the segments up to like 4 so that it is smoother. And then I can drag the amount way down and I'll just make it a very small number, like a 0.001. And then I want 
want the bevel modifier to be on all the other objects. So hold down the shift key and make sure this is the active object, the one with the bevel. And using control L, we can use the link and transfer data. And I want to copy the modifiers. So now all the objects have the bevel modifier. You can see there's a little bevel on the edges. And then I can just shade all of the objects smooth. Now it is a little bit hard to see, but if I look kind of down here in this view, you can see there almost looks like there's a little bit of stretching. So I'm going to go into edit mode, and then I'm just going to add some loop cuts. So I'll add a loop cut here and drag this loop cut up, add another loop cut here and drag this one down. And when you're dragging the loop cut, you can hit the E key and the E key is going to shape it to the edge. So I'm going to bring it in and then just place it there. So if I go back to object mode now, you can see the faces look a bit more flat and that looks a bit nicer. So let's now make the perch. So I'll go to the add menu let's add a cylinder and then right behind me here if you open up the add cylinder settings I'm going to turn the vertices to 12 and then I want to scale this object way down so it is very small and I can bring it forward I'll just scale that way down and then I want to rotate the cylinder over so I'll rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees and I'll bring this down and I'll bring it in and then I can go into edit mode and I just want to select this face here so I'll select that face and I'll just bring the face out on the y-axis and I think I'm might want to select everything and scale it up a little bit maybe bring it down on the z-axis and then if I go back to object mode I just want to apply the scale with Control a and then I also want to shade this object smooth and then I want to add the same bevel so I'm going to select this object and then hold down the shift key and select this object last and what we can do now is press Control L and we want to copy the modifiers so it's going to copy the bevel modifier from this object over to this object now if I shade this object flat again this might be happening for you where it's adding a bevel to to these edges right here but I don't want to add a bevel to those edges just these edges so right here on the bevel modifier I can just turn the angle up and I just need it to be a little bit over 30 and now it's adding a bevel there but it's not adding a bevel on those edges because of the angle and then I can shade this smooth again so let's now add the roof tiles so I will go to the add menu and add a plane and I'm gonna scale this plane down again by 0.1 so that it is much smaller and I'll bring this up on the z-axis and I'm gonna go to side view and then I will go into edit mode and I'm gonna bring this over and rotate it over and scale it down and I'm just gonna stick it right over here and we're gonna be creating three roof tiles so I'm gonna bring the first one down just scale it down there and then I can extrude that face up so that it has some thickness and then I want to go to the vertex select and I'll go into wireframe and I want to deselect everything and just select these vertices right here and I want to bring these vertices down so that those roof tiles have a slant and I could also go over to here and box select these nodes here and just bring them up a little bit so basically I want that little slant right there and then I will select everything and I will duplicate everything and I'm gonna bring this down kind of rotate it over and I'm gonna have it overlapping a little bit so the wooden roof tiles are gonna be overlapping and then I'll do that one more time so I'll duplicate this again and I will stick it here and kind of rotate it and make it so the tiles are overlapping now if it didn't get far enough you can just select everything and then you can scale the tiles up a bit more and you can bring them over just place them about there and then I want to go to add modifier and let's add the mirror modifier and if I zoom way in here I want to scale this up a bit more and then I also want to turn off the merge because I don't want it to be merged and I can just kind of bring these in and kind of bring them up and then if I go over here to the side you can see they're not long enough so I can just scale them up on the y-axis to just fit the size of that so I'll go back to solid view and see how that's looking so we now have a nice little detail there of some tiles so I'll go back to object mode and then I want to apply the mirror modifier and why I'm applying the mirror modifier is because because when we add the materials I want the wood texture to look different on both sides I don't want the texture to be mirrored so I'm applying the mirror and then I'll just apply the scale with control a and then again I want to add the same bevel modifier so I'm gonna shift select any of these objects which have the bevel and then with control L we can again just copy the modifiers and then again we can shade the object smooth so let's now create the metal hanger so again let's go to the add menu I'm gonna go here to curve and I'm gonna add the BZA and I'll bring this object up here and then I will go into edit mode and I'm gonna scale the entire curve down so it's much smaller and I'll go to front view and I'm gonna rotate this over by 90 degrees and I can also rotate it on the z-axis by 90 degrees just kind of bring this over here and scale it down and I'm gonna put it on the top of the birdhouse and then back in edit mode I can select this curve and I'm gonna scale the handle and rotate it and I'm gonna bring it down here and then I can extrude that handle and rotate it over and we're just gonna make a base hook shape so I'll just rotate that just like that and then bring it down like that and then I want to shape this a little bit better so it's a bit more of a circular shape 
and I need to scale the handles down so that they curve a little bit more. Also bring this one up here, just kind of bring it up and then I will extrude that down. And then you can go back to object mode and I wanna go right over here to the object data properties. Let's open up the geometry and we can take the bevel depth and we can just turn that up. So make it just a very small number so that it has a little bit of thickness. And I also wanna check mark the fill caps so that that is filled. So I can now scale this object down a little bit more and I just wanna bring it over here. We're gonna have one on the front of the birdhouse. So on the front top, just kind of like that. And then I can duplicate this and we're going to bring this one over. And just to add a little bit of variation, I'm going to rotate this one over on the Z axis. I'll just rotate it by 180 degrees so that it's rotated the opposite way around. And so now we have some hooks in the birdhouse. So let's now add a little bit of string. So I'm going to select one of the hanger objects and we'll go into edit mode. And I'm just going to select two of those handles. And then I can duplicate those handles. And then we can separate these into their own object with the P key and go to separate. Then I can go back to object mode. We'll just select this object and go into edit mode. And I will go to top view. And I want to bring this over here and I can rotate it over and kind of rotate it down just like that and then I can select this handle and I can bring this handle way over and I will go to side view and I'm going to rotate this over and kind of stick it down here so just making a little bit of string which is going to hang the birdhouse on the tree and rotate this over and I'm just extruding the handle so extruding the handle and rotating it and then I will extrude the handle again and I'm just going to kind of bring that up there. Then I'll do the same thing over here on this side. So select this handle and I'll extrude it and scale it down and rotate it a bit. I can bring these both back a bit just like that. And then I can extrude this again and I can kind of bring that up there. Maybe select both of these and kind of center them. So just like that. And I might just want to bring these up a little bit higher. And I can go back to object mode. And this is going to wrap it up for part one of the Birdhouse animation tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying this so far and thank you for watching. So in the next part, in part two, we are going to be adding the wood materials and we're also going to be doing the lighting and then we're going to be creating the tree branch and the tree trunks. So when part two is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen and the link will be in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in part two.